Hello there and welcome back to the Closet Historian and welcome back to me in the same hair and makeup that you saw me in last. But you know, we're doing double duty today. Today I have another kind of weird crafty DIY project for you all. This one's of a bit larger scale than the last few I put up on here. Um, I have another display for more of my bug jewelry to make today. This was the first one I kind of envisioned doing and then everything else kind of just like my redecor or redecorating project up in my bedroom kind of sprung out of this idea, honestly. But I was trying to think about ways to store and display my insect jewelry. And of course I have that shadow box that I made here on the channel recently. I'll put a card up to that. But the first idea I had was to make sort of a naturalist or like entomological, entomological sort of natural history museum almost looking display out of a giant glass cloche. We all know how I love my glass jars and such, my, my dust collectors, as I have all around here in the studio and then up in my bedroom as well. And so I decided to go ahead and try and find a giant one. And I was able to, I'll put a link to the place where I found this giant glass cloche below, but it doesn't seem that they have them anymore. So I, I'm not exactly sure the best source to get these. This one came wrapped super safely. So if this store does pop up with more of them, I highly recommend them. But I have this giant oversized glass cloche and I'm going to try and create some branches out of posable wire and felt. Felt because then I can go ahead and pin my brooches into them. So I'm gonna try and fill this with like a bit of dead tree, or at least it will look from far away like a bit of branches, and then pin all my bug brooches to those. I have sort of an idea of how I want to do this, but I'm not sure if it will work. Let's dive on in and get started. All right, here is my giant glass cloche. Once again, it's very fun. The glass on this is not perfect, by the way. It's got a lot of imperfections going on. There's actually quite a big bubble on this side, but I don't mind because the waviness and the imperfections in the glass make it look antique, which is not a problem to me. And the base here, it does have a little maiden china sticker on here. I'm, I was like, what? what is this talking about? I was trying to figure out if it had the name of who makes these things um, so I could look up where this glass cloche comes from and buy more of them hopefully in the future, but I'm sure it's wholesale. So I got these pieces of sliced log, pieces of wood from Michael's craft store. I was originally going to go ahead and uh, stabilize everything and drill right through the base of the glass cloche but then I figured I might want to put this something else inside of this glass one day. I might want to move this display out of here or move it into something else one day. So I should make it removable and uh, give myself a little bit more flexibility. So I have various colors of felt here. I have this sort of grayish brown that I'm going to use for the branches themselves. And then I have that green that I'm going to use to kind of cover up this base. Um, and then I have my bug brooches, of course, that I will be pinning, pinning onto here. And then I grabbed two different types of wire. I had this kind of flat uh, wire here that's like about, oh, I don't know, maybe a quarter inch thick flat wire. I just chose the thickest wires they had over in the jewelry section at the craft store. Um, you don't have to be very specific about this. I think you could use old like wire hangers even um, if you wanted something that was a little bit stiffer. Um, but these are kind of quite soft wires, but I plan on being quite delicate with all this and not bending it too much back and forth so things won't eventually break on me. But I was trying to figure out just in general how this was going to work, how I wanted to stabilize these wires inside of here. Um, and I decided on five main branches here. So I'm just marking out five branches, one in the very center of this log, and then kind of surrounding that for others. So I can put these little pronged sections of wire up through the base here. So I just marked out five spots equally spaced here on my log. And I go grab a drill from my dad and drill holes in those spots. So luckily my dad has tools around. So I just went ahead and drilled through this log with a larger drill bit so I could feed wire through it like so. And here I was trying to use the flat wire and I was like, nope. So I'm switching over to the round wire. I would have had to use a larger drill bit and made larger holes if I wanted to use that flat wire, but the round wire works just as well. So cut a piece about as long. I think this was about 17 inches long. Uh, my dome here, I think is 15 inches tall. Um, so keeping that in mind, figuring out how long my branches to go through. But I just feeding that wire underneath like this. Uh, so each end gets fed up through one of the holes in my log like so. So the kind of connection between underneath keeps these a little bit more stable and helps them stand up like so. And I'm gonna do that again for the other two out exterior holes here, like so. Just stick the wire up through the log, bend it over, and feed the other half up through. Of course, this would be harder if you were using a stiffer wire, so it's <laughs> easier to do it this way with that this soft craft wire. Um, it worked perfectly fine for me, so you don't have to get yourself, you know, comp anything complex. This is just basic supplies from the craft store, except for the, of course, glass cloche is very large, but they do have smaller ones at Michael's Crafts, for example, or at Ikea, they have small glass cloche jars like this on a different scale. This is just, you know, giant. And then I started bending my wires to see if I can make them look a little bit more like branches. I was like, oh yeah, and that'll fit in there. Perfect. 
<laughs> looking so stunning so far. Very natural. Also, this log was getting bits of bark and dirt everywhere, so that was a shame. But I did like how it had its natural bark still. But speaking of bark, time to make some fake tree bark here for my branches. So I'm cutting this, uh, this is actually a wool blend felt that I bought on Etsy, but of course you could use craft felt or any felt you had around, or just use wool itself. You could probably wrap these with wool yarn. You could use velvet or ribbons, different things you could use to do this part, but I'm just gonna make little sheaths out of one inch wide strips of wool here. So I just cut, uh, I didn't even measure, I just cut by eye one inch strip wide pieces of this wool in corresponding lengths for my wires, and then I'm just going to sew them into a tube like this over here on the machine. I'm not even going to pull these tubes right side out or whatever, so the seams on the inside. I'm going to leave this little tiny seam in the felt on the outside. The thing about felt is it doesn't fray, so I don't have to worry about that. And I felt like any extra little ribbony texture was just making my branches look more textured, so that was fine. And I did cut the very end of this to a point, so I just sewed off the end of that, backstitched a little just to keep things from falling apart on me. But just like so, that's how I sewed all these little sheaths for the wires. Um, and if there was, you know, the wire was a little bit loose in there, I thought that was a good thing because it just leaves me more room between the felt and the wire to pin my brooches to later. So really I'm just giving my wires something to pin into. You could cover wire with like polymer clay or something like that, but then you couldn't pin into it with the brooches. So the idea here was to keep things very pinnable and poseable so that I could, like this, pin beetles into them like I'm about to do here. So I was like, oh, will that work? And then I was very happy because it does. Great news. Um, so I started making more of those little sheets for each branch. A couple of these, I did stick an extra piece of wire into the same hole from the top down and uh, separated this so that I had these little sheets. I left a little blank spot in the sewing. So I left myself a little gap halfway up the tube here so that I could slide one piece of wire out of it. So I have a little gap here so I can have cover one wire and not the other, and then I can slip another sheath onto the other wire. Hopefully you can kind of see what I mean. So I'm going to feed this over both wires, like so, because I have two in this slot. And then I will have one of the wires poke out of the spot that I left open in the tube. Of course, finagling this on here is not the most fun thing. But like so, I can get that down on here. And then see how there's one wire that's like naked sticking out of that still? So I left a gap, and then that little naked wire sticks out of the gap, and I can make a separate shorter covering for that one. That way I can have these branching off and looking more like branches, really. And of course you could get very, you know, nitpicky about this and make them look very much like branches if you wanted to get in here. You could maybe even like faux finish them with some paint and some acrylic and really make these look like they have like lichen on them or make them look a little bit more like bark. But I thought this was, I, you know, it's how realistic you want to go, which is the same with the brooches themselves. When you're making, like if you're like me making these moth and beetle brooches, you can make them as photorealistic or as interpretive as you like. And so this, again, with these branches, I was trying to make them look kind of like branches, but I wasn't focusing on making them look like photorealistic branches. I kind of wanted there to be a little bit of a fantasy element to it because it would then match the brooches quite well. So I covered all my branches like so, and then I cut a piece of felt. I should have done this first, but I cut slits in the felt where all the branches needed to be. Um, again, I didn't cut out circles. I just cut slits and then slid down the piece of felt like so. And you could glue this down to the wood. I actually just smoothed it out and left it as is. Um, I like, if I don't have to glue something, I would rather not. Um, if I can stitch something, I would rather stitch it. But uh, because in the future, I might want to take this part and change something up about it. So I'm just going to scooch this felt down here and it stays quite well. And so I'm just going to leave it there. Um, you could, of course, paint the base of this. You could glue a uh, real moss to the base of something like this, or you could... Um, cover it in like a astroturf kind of stuff. You could cover it in velvet. It looks nice. If you had a base that was like not as naturalistic as this piece of wood, of course you could do various other things. Cover it with pebbles, cover it with rocks. Um, here I'm just cutting some rough like dried leaf shapes out of the extra felt here and just winding those around, kind of twisting them a little bit and leaving them on the forest floor as it were here inside this terrarium. I used to say terranium because I thought that's what these things were called, but it is terrarium. I believe. <clears throat> so that's very embarrassing for me in some of my older videos of me saying the word terranium when that isn't a word. But like terrain in an um, you know, terrain. I thought, you know, but no, it's terrarium. Whatever. Anyway, I have some of this variegated yarn. And I'm going to wrap it around this little card from Mood to create some very loose, very floofy pom-poms that are going to serve as like some fuzzy moss down here. Um, so I have making a little pom-pom. You just tie off um, 
a lot of yarn like this. Hopefully that makes sense. So I'm tying off around all these loops. So now I have like all these loops. It's just easier to do on a card like that. And then I can cut the loops and now I have a pom-pom. Uh, it's very easy to make pom-poms. It will take you two seconds on Google to find varieties of them. Now I didn't tie it tight enough so I kept pulling pieces out of my pom-pom. Oops. But I'm using a rat tail comb here to floof the yarn so that it looks like fuzzy moss. Um, this is just acrylic yarn, I think. I don't think any... I don't even think there's a wool blend in here from, again, Michael's Crafts. Um, but I thought it was good colors for doing something like this and making moss out of it. So I made another one of those pom-poms. And again, I'm just floofing most of it up with the comb. Of course, I'm getting a lot of fibers on my comb. And again, I could stitch these down. I could glue these down. But they just stayed in place if I put them there and they're not going to get any movement. So I just arranged them how I liked. And if I need to rearrange them or remove them in the future, I can. And I took some of the spare fibers that had got caught on the comb, and I kind of wove them around some of my branches so it looked like moss was creeping up these branches, um, or that they had a little bit of lichen on them and stuff like that. So the thing about felt is it's, or not felt, but like uh, fibers that are made to mimic wool and or wool fibers themselves is that they like to stick to each other. Um, so these stuck onto my branches quite well. I did put a couple of stitches in where I had the branches that split off. So where I had two sheaths on one wire, well, not one wire, on two wires, but you know what I mean, where I split them off, I did go ahead and stitch just a, a couple of tacking stitches with a matching color thread to stick those together at the junction points, I suppose. <laughs> Vocabulary today, not working. But at this point, uh, I felt ready to start just pinning my brooches on. So I grabbed all my beetles that I've been making recently. I grabbed my Trovelor collection as well. So these are all the beetles that I made, but now I'm pinning on the Trovelor ones, which are like the fine quality, the fine quality beetles. Here. So I've got my beetles and Trovelor's beetles to living together in this terrarium. And uh, the contrast between the two is more uh, obvious that way, but oh well. But I thought this was a very fun way to display all of these. I didn't really have enough room in my jewelry drawers for all of the beetles I've been making lately. Um, so now I have my moths and my beetles here in this kind of naturalist inspired display. And I really love how it came out. I'm so glad it came out like I had hoped. And it looks great up here in my bedroom. And I am making progress here on the gallery wall above my dresser. I have a new butterfly here on the wall, and I actually have a yellow moth you can kind of see in the very top corner there. There's a new yellow moth framed on the wall. And then I did finally get some prints to put in those frames that I didn't have prints in last time. These uh, two main the Veritas on the right and the um, floral in the center printed at FedEx because the prints I had ordered were had still hadn't shipped, and I thought, you know what, I'm giving up. So I got these <laughs> printed at FedEx, um, and it worked out quite well. Thank you, as always, for watching this video today, and Happy New Year. I will see you all again here real soon. Bye.